Hello everyone, my name is Joost Kranenborg and together with my supervisors and advisors I would like to welcome you to this presentation on our newly developed swash zone model. This is a model capable of simulating swash zone morphodynamics that are produced by a solitary wave. Let's start by revisiting the swash zone. The swash zone is the region that lies between the surf zone and the dry part of the beach. This is the region where waves run up and down the beach continuously covering it and uncovering. This region is associated with large sediment fluxes and rapid morphological change that sometimes can be on the order of several centimeters just in just seconds. Typically, when we model this region morphodynamically, we use depth average models because they are cheaper than depth resolving models. However, depth average models lack information in depth direction and are therefore not suitable for studying depth dependent processes. For this reason, we are developing a swash zone model that is depth resolving and therefore can resolve these processes in the depth direction. Our model is a 2DV model built in the open form environment and is based on the model of Jacobson as of 2014. The hydrodynamics are solved using the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations, which are coupled with the K-omega Wilcox model, and also including the new limiter proposed by Larsen and Fuhrmann from 2018. Uh, for uh, roughness effects, uh, we use a wall function approach with a roughness height of two and a half times the, the, the mean grain size diameter. This then feeds into the sediment transport module. Sediment transport is split up into suspended sediment and bed load uh, sediment transport. For suspended sediment transport, we use an advection diffusion equation, where at a certain reference height, we put a reference concentration, which is calculated using a reference concentration model. In this case, we study two different reference concentration models, namely the england fratzer model and the susima fratzer model. Bed load transport is solved just by the england fratzer model. The sediment fluxes are then incorporated in a morphodynamics module, uh, to calculate the bed level change. And this is done by a normal uh, sediment balance equation. However, if the angle or the gradient of the bed level at a certain position is greater than the angle of repose, uh, a, a sand slide operation is also done to make sure that uh, no bed level gradient is bigger than the angle of repose. Lastly, using this, the, the, the morphodynamics, we update the mesh which then is fed back into the hydrodynamics. And this is done every time step and then makes a fully coupled model from the hydrodynamics to the sediment transport and morphodynamics. The case we're going to study today is a solitary wave case, uh, which is based on the experiments by Young et al. from 2010. This is a case where a solitary wave of the wave, the wave height of 60 centimeters runs up a sandy bed, so it's a one in 15 slope, uh, and a 0.2 millimeter uh, sediment size. Uh, previous to this experiment that I'm going to compare it with, uh, other experiments were done as well. So the slope is not exactly one in 15, but it already has a kind of uh, built-in profile from the previous waves. The instruments that we uh, are going to compare with are acoustic wave gauges for the, the surface elevation. And there's also a profiler and some hand measured uh, profile information. For the numerical model, uh, we use a cell size of one centimeter in the X direction or in the cross shore direction. And in the depth direction, this ranges from two centimeters higher up in the water column to half a millimeter near the bed. And this is needed because uh, the cell size near the bed needs to be the same dimension as uh, the, ref uh, the reference concentration height, which also is half a millimeter. Let's look at some qualitative results and snapshots from the model. So here it shows where there's air and water in the model. Uh, so blue is water and white is air. And this is a snapshot just after the wave is broken uh, and the bore has been formed. So you can see there's quite a lot of air in the water column. Now let's look at how the sediment concentration looks like. Here we show the suspended sediment concentration. Red corresponds to a high sediment concentration and blue corresponds to a low or no sediment concentration. What's probably most interesting in this image is what happens at roughly 28 meters, where we see a plume of sediment being generated. This is generated by the vortices uh, coming from the broken wave, which pick up sediment from near the bed and advect it higher into the water column. The remnants of these can also be seen higher up at roughly 29 meters and 31 meters, but there the sediment's already diffused a bit throughout the water column. Here we see a snapshot a bit later into the uprush, 
Uh, here we see that the air content is almost gone, except for maybe at the tip of the swash. When we look at the sediment, we also see uh, that the previously uh, these plumes resulting from the vortices that are induced by the breaking wave now also have diffused more or less and the sediment concentration is distributed much more evenly across uh, the whole water column. Here we see a snapshot of the backwash. What can be seen is that fast flowing water coming from uh, higher up the beach hits a slower moving water lower at the beach, generating a backwash bore. This bore can be seen at roughly 28 meters. When we look at the sediment concentration, this also reveals that the sediment concentration is higher in this fast flowing part, a bit higher up the beach and lower uh, behind the bore. We also see that at the position of the bore, it seems like the sediment is mixed uh, into the full water column. Now let's look at some quantitative results. Here we will compare the surface elevation from the model to the experiments. Uh, we will compare this at four different locations, but first we have two different locations here at 24 meters and 28, uh, 26 meters in the cross position. Uh, and it's good to know here that the initial water line was at around 27, 28 meters. So here a surface elevation of zero basically corresponds to the initial surface elevation before the wave was produced. So as clearly can be seen in both figures, first the first wave arrives, or the first bore arrives, then the surface elevation decays again until we see that, the, that it increases uh, when the backwash uh, bore is generated. Um, it seems like at both locations the open foam model reproduces the first uh, uprush, uh, the first bore quite well, and also then the decay of surface elevation. Uh, also, uh, the uh, backwash uh, bore, the backwash increase in surface elevation is represented in both cases. However, here it, it seems that the model does not really keep up as well as uh, with the uprush. For instance, at 24 meters, we see that the surface elevation is slightly underpredicted between, say, 15 and 20 seconds. And after 20 seconds, the surface elevation is actually overpredicted by the model. Uh, this is not as evident at the right image, so at 26 meters. Uh, here it would seem that the amplitude, say from at 15 seconds, uh, corresponds quite well between the model and the experiment. However, it seems that the backwash is delayed by maybe a second. This is also something we will see in subsequent images. Here we again have two figures of the surface elevation, however, this time a bit more onshore. So the left image is at 29 meters and the right figure shows the surface elevation at 32 meters. So these are both uh, above the initial waterline, which was roughly 27, 28 meters. Now, if we look at the left picture, it seems that both the timing and also the uh, amplitude of the surface elevation fits quite well between the model and the experiment. Uh, at least for the beginning, and then maybe after 17 seconds or so, we see that the, the, the open foam model uh, does not really go, uh, go down to a zero surface elevation anymore. If we look at the right, we see that uh, the model, uh, the, the bore or the swash in the model arrives a bit earlier than in the experiments. Uh, the amplitude is roughly the same, but uh, it arrives a bit too early. And also similar to the left uh, figure, we see that uh, the surface elevation in the model does not really go down to zero after the, the wave has passed. This is this is effect uh, of the surface elevation not going down to zero is known for these type of models. And it's also uh, quite visible in other studies. Uh, and of course, it becomes more pronounced the uh, less the water depth in the swash would be, because then the effect would be bigger. So in the lower swash, this effect would not really be as big as in the higher up in the swash. Also, if we look at the right figure, uh, it looks like the, the swash, uh, or there's a bit too much water uh, going up at this position. And actually, this is something we observe in the model as well, that it slightly over predicts the run-up length. Here in this slide, we show the morphodynamic results. So here the profile evolution is plotted for two different models against the experimental profile evolution. This is plotted on the y-axis, which shows the bed level change. On the left, we have a model that uses the engelund fratze reference concentration model. And on the right, we have a, a model that uses the Zissema-Fratze reference concentration model. 
At first glance, we see that both these models give an overall correct prediction of where there is accretion and where there is erosion. So they predict that there is accretion between roughly well, 20, 22 meters to 30 meters and erosion of 30 and between 30 and 40 meters. However, we also see that both the models uh, predict uh, a slight a profile that seems to have moved slightly onshore. Now, this can be explained by also the uh, overpredicted run-up length. So it seems like the model has moved the whole swash uh, slightly onshore. What we also see if we compare these two figures is that the Zusman Fratzer model uh, is superior to the England Fratzer model, at least when it comes to uh, the amplitude of the morphodynamic change. So the Zusman Fratzer model actually predicts the correct uh, morphodynamic change of one, roughly one and a half centimeters accretion. Uh, and roughly one and a half centimeters erosion at the respective locations. So this takes us to the conclusion. So we have built a 2DV RANS uh, depth resolving model that's capable of solving the hydrodynamics and morphodynamics of, of a solitary wave swash event reasonably well. Uh, suspended sediment looked realistic, however, this still needs to be validated, of course. Uh, we see a slight overprediction of the runoff, which also translates in the, the morphodynamic profile being moved slightly onshore in the model. Uh, and also comparing with, diff with the two reference concentration models, it looks like the Zusman Fretze model predict predicts uh, the better profile with a better transport magnitudes. Uh, so, to look, what to look forward to in the future uh, is mainly these improvements to the model swash location. Um, we would like to validate a suspended sediment transport. Uh, also, maybe the most interesting is a cooperation with the next presenter, Sara Dionisio Antonio, uh, who has done experiments with bichromatic and irregular waves, uh, which we also would like to look into with this model. Finally, we would like to translate uh, insights that we get with this model to be used with depth average models that are less uh, computationally intensive and more easy to use for engineering purposes. So thank you for listening. If you have any questions or remarks on this, uh, please send me an email to the email address that is written below. Uh, for the rest, I wish you uh, a very pleasant continuation of this uh, virtual conference, and I hope to be able to meet you, of course, in real life very soon. Thank you.